everyone. I hope you all are doing well as you always do. So basically, what we have learned in the last class is all about the basic about the cell. We have learned about the cell theory and, and what did we learn? The properties and the characteristic of the cell. In today's part, what we are going to learn? Further, the structural information about the cell. The main thing that we'll be covering, let's take a look. I don't have to introduce myself again and again, right? Okay, I'm not doing it. Let's start. I hope you can see my screen already, guys. Give me a second. It is just going to start here. So basically, guys, the next thing that we have to cover in this uh, today's lecture is we'll be learning about the structural information, uh, the structural organization of the cell. We'll be covering cell membrane and how does transport happen across the cell membrane and yes, the cell wall. So let's start. I will not waste the time, guys. Let's start. So basically, a cell is generally made up of three basic components, cell wall and cell membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. I must say cell membrane is the basic one because cell wall is only present in the plant cell. So basically, guys, suppose this is plant cell and suppose this is animal cell. On, uh, and uh, into the plant cell here, other than cell membrane, their cell wall will always be present. Ignore the way I'm drawing. This is cell wall. And internal to it, a cell membrane is there. And in animal cell, there's only cell membrane and then central nucleus is present. One thing, if you remember, guys, uh, into the plant cell here, nucleus is not present in this, at the center. Actually, in animal cell, nucleus is present at the center. But in plant cell, nucleus is present at the periphery because most of the space is taken up by the vacuum. That's the difference. But talking about what is the basic structure, cell membrane, nucleus, and the cytoplasm. So let's study further. The first thing that we have to understand, guys, is cell membrane or the plasma membrane. This is very thin, very delicate membrane. This membrane, it allows only certain material to pass through it, only specific material. And the material is actually the molecule that used to pass. It used to be selectively permeable. Me, it allows only selective material to pass through it. It is made up of lipid. If you don't remember, lipid is made up of, actually lipid belongs to the fat category. Fat belongs to the lipid category. Lipid is a big category. So into the membrane, this lipid is present and protein is present. And rest of the thing is also present that now I'm going to tell you. So onto the screen, you see this is a cell. Actually, um, if you remember, into the cell, all the molecules, they are known as biomolecules because bio means life. So these are the reason of life. So these are biomolecules. A cell is made up of that. Onto the picture, they have shown a magnified image of the cell, which is showing the image actually at the molecular level. So these are all the molecules. This is cell. And this is the membrane, the pinkish thing that you see. And they have cut a section of the membrane and there they are showing it. You don't have to be scared of the diagram. That's no one is going to ask you uh, in your paper. But the one that you need to know, I'm going to tell you. Not the structural information, but what you have to understand, this membrane is present two times. You know what? There were not two, uh, one person, but two person named Singer and Nicholson. They have given a model for the structural information of the cell. And that model is known as, actually of the cell membrane, I would say, fluid and mosaic model. Fluid and mosaic. Mosaic means network. That it, This membrane, it looks like network. Fluid means it has fluid property. Like the water is there. When you tap on the water, now there are waves like this and then water gets normal. In the same way here also, the fluid means the membrane uh, is having all the molecules. When this is hit and all the molecules are settled down to normal, that's the fluid property. And that's why we say fluid and mosaic model. This was given by Singer and Nicholson. He has explained the structure of cell membrane in a beautiful way. The one that you see on the screen, that is actually explained by them. That these molecules, these this membrane is not present on like having a single kind of thing. It's having something two times. This two time is known as bilayer. Means half a layer, half a layer. That means bilayer. Not two layers, but two parts of it. Bilayer. This is actually known as phospholipid bilayer. Suppose I'm saying that some organelle is single membrane. Single membranous organ. Means this is having this membrane. 
if i'm saying double membranous it means this thing is present two times one more this this stuff will be present one more bilayer would be present like that way so this is the structure and e is each you know these molecules that you see actually these are lipid molecules phospholipid bilayer phospholipid means lipid is attached with phosphorus uh, actually many of the students get confused at this lipid is attached with the phosphorus so this is phospholipid bilayer this is one phospholipid layer this is another phospholipid now into this phospholipid layer these things are present at the structural level this is known as head and this is known as tail now you understand this only you don't have to go into the structural information if you want to see it's in front of you this is a lipid it's a fat and the structure is given but you don't have to learn that i am going to tell you the structure of the membrane here this is a very black and white diagram but uh, i suggest you should go for this diagram this is easy to understand and many people just un you know understand by looking at the diagram in the easiest way if you need to draw it it will be easy to make simply saying so basically this is phospholipid bilayer like this is a cell a cross section a small section they have cut and shown there so this circle thing and the tail thing so this is head and tail now let me tell you head used to be hydrophilic water loving hydrophilic means water loving as in attracted to water and then there is hydrophobic water hating or water repellent tail now let me change the pen color now let me tell you one thing guys there are phospholipid bilayer one time and two time now we used to say that through the membrane molecules are moving actually these molecules move through a channel and that channel is made up of the protein you see this is this is a protein this protein act as a channel through which molecules move in and out like molecule used to move in and out through the channels and these are made up of protein now let me tell you into the membrane lipid is present protein is present this protein is present in two ways one it is present like a complete throughout this throughout protein is known as integral protein which is present throughout the membrane and this is the one which actually help in making the transportation now guys there is one more protein also you see this protein this protein the one that i'm circling right now this protein is not present throughout it is just additionally present this is known as peripheral protein actually this is only present at the periphery just remember it so there are two type of protein into the membrane so i am telling you a magnified diagram of the membrane of the cell like this and in this lipid molecules are present in a form of bilayer protein is present and additionally if you see in the diagram i suppose you want to know this carbohydrates are also attached protein see protein plus carbo uh, actually glyco what is used for carbohydrate so if protein is attached to the carbohydrate we call it as glycoprotein if lipid is attached to the carbohydrate we call it as glycolipid just additional knowledge i'm telling you but carbohydrate chain is also attached and that's it this is the membrane is that clear i'm going to show you one thing this is another diagram of the cell membrane like in a beautiful way that these all are the parts of the cell membrane and glycolipid glycoproteins are attached means protein and lipid uh, and pro uh, uh, protein and carbohydrate these things okay so in that's integral protein and uh, protein channels these are all blue blue things these are all protein and they are present in different designs actually proteins are of different types and they are present in different designs so they are present in it but some protein act as a channel not all of them some protein protein channel is that clear guys the cytoskeletal element these are present inside the cell right now we not discussing about it i hope i suppose you're looking at it is that clear now as i mentioned the fluid fluid and pause mosaic model property let me show you that video actually you will understand that even in better way i have opened my one note yes here it is you can see so guys in this picture now actually in this video uh, they have explained the fluid property look at this see this is a cell now they are magnifying the cell uh oh oh they are magnifying the cell like anything now they are moving nearby the cell and they are showing it at the molecular level this is the cell membrane see something is hitting on the cell membrane molecules move here and there and then molecules come back that's why we call it as the fluid property mosaic means network obviously it appears like a network in the next thing what they have shown in it
थोड़ा सा जूम कर लेते हैं वीडियो को या नाउ यू सी सी सम मोर मॉलिक्यूल्स कार्बोहाइड्रेट लिपिड एंड एवरीथिंग इज अटैच्ड विद इट now the green thing they have shown uh, here these are the protein channels which act as a transport uh, molecules and see other molecules are moving through it in and out this is what happen is that clear that's it that's it. that is what i wanted to show you now guys let's come back to the presentation thing and let me continue i hope that's clear to you if you have any doubt you know what you have to do now guys let's move forward and let's understand transport across the membrane so basically guys you know that molecules used to move across the membrane and membrane is selectively permeable now point to write is how they move molecules across the membrane used to move by active and passive transport active is like the very active student sitting on the front bench of the class and passive is like ah passive student so active this is the one that uses energy and energy this is important guys it can come in your board exam or olympiads so please listen to it carefully it means energy this is using energy at a very high scale active passive means sitting like pa passive and no energy is being used now guys tell me one thing whenever we talk like uh, no energy is used in this diagram they have shown this only na molecules and channels molecules moving in and out so now guys um whenever we talk about energy what does it mean what is energy do not think about that physics definition that you have learned in bio actually at the biological level energy means a chemical that we are using when we just do any work we are using a chemical that is helping us when the actually that's a bio molecule name is atp i know that you know will form adenosine triphosphate so whenever we are doing i am speaking i am doing my body movement my body is using energy my body is using these molecules atp is adenosine triphosphate in which three phosphate molecules are present so when this phosphate molecules they are breaking up from that uh, bond is breaking up from their energy is being released into active and passive trans especially in active one only in active one i would say this atp is being used now let me tell you one more definition let me see if i have a space there uh, no i don't have a space i'll just write it up there only understand this guys suppose uh, you are standing here and this is a hill now you are standing here imagine you have a ball with you it's a big ball that you have to throw up there you have to throw up stream obviously you will need a lot of energy right now imagine a lot of energy to throw it up now imagine you are standing here and now you have to throw that ball obviously you don't have to even touch it you just uh, put it up there and it just go that is what active and passive transport into the active transport molecules used to move i'm just writing about active here molecules used to move from low to high concentration concentration means as an amount kind of thing from low to high that's why energy is needed to push into passive molecules used to move from high to low and that's why no in high to low concentration that's why no energy is utilized are you understanding this point now let me give you example i'll just write example in different color Mm, okay example of active transport is amino acid and glucose molecule inside the cell or throughout the cell membrane used to move by active transport and passive transport example is carbon dioxide oxygen water molecule it used to move by the passive transport is that clear now let's move forward okay if you want to note it down i can just wait for 5 seconds only because i know you can just pause the video and take a screenshot or something let's start now guys diffusion and osmosis let me tell you diffusion and osmosis they both are type of passive transport here no atp is needed no energy is needed in both the cases molecules are moving from high to low concentration one difference is there into osmosis semi permeable membrane is involved and into diffusion 
membrane, it, it doesn't have to take anything with the membrane. Let me give you a stupid example. Suppose this is a society. I always give this example to my students. And this is your friend's home. This is a gate. And here gatekeeper is sitting. And here you are. Okay. Now suppose you are, let me change the pen color first. So basically, suppose there happen two things. In first case, you are directly going uh, in the society to meet your friend at his house. And then there's second scenario where you want to go, but then gatekeeper stops you. And then you make a call at your friend's house to take a confirmation whether you want to meet, uh, you know, your friend, something like that. And then the confirmation is there, then you go. First case is diffusion. The society is the cell. You are the molecule and gatekeeper is the cell membrane. So first, first cases where you are moving just like that, no energy is needed, no one is disrupting you, cell membrane is telling you nothing, you can just move. Second case is osmosis, where cell membrane is selectively choosing you to move. I hope you're getting it now. So sol solute molecule move from high to low concentration and here solvent molecule move from high to low concentration. And one more thing here through the Selectively permeable membrane. Now, if you are getting confused, a solution is made up of two things: a solute and solvent. And solute, um, yeah, solute and solvent, and that's what a solution is. Solvent is usually a water because water is the universal solvent. Now, guys, I give you one more example of uh, the diffusion that imagine you're standing in the corner of the room, you're using a perfume or deo, but after a while, you can smell the uh, perfume throughout the room. That is what uh, diffusion is, that molecules are moving. Obviously, in bio, you cannot write these kind of examples. So in bio, you can just write examples like water molecules. Osmosis as in, I mean, into osmosis water molecule, you can write because that's a solvent which is moving into diffusion here. CO2 and oxygen, they'll be the best examples to write. Is that clear? Now, I hope you're understanding this. Let's move forward. And I don't think I need to give any explanation on the diagram, guys. They're simply showing the movement. Clear? Let's move. Now, guys, one thing that you have to understand, what is isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solution? How we calculate it? Suppose we take a beaker and into that we can take a cell and then we take an additional solution outside. And then we compare that inside and outside, what is the difference in the concentration? And that's how we, uh, you know, calculate or that's how we define the solution. In isotonic, like this is a cell, in isotonic, there is an equal concentration in and out. In hypotonic, uh, let me additionally tell you here again, I have told you this before also, solution is made up of two things, solute and solute. Solvent always move and solute is present in the less amount. Now into the isotonic solution here, concentration is same. Into hypertonic and hypo, you have to see it on the basis of solute or solvent. Think about it. I give you one minute, guys. You can think about it. Okay. So hyper, uh, hypertonic solution is the one that has higher water concentration than the cell. I'm talking about hypertonic. Here externally, you will see more of the water concentration as than as that of the cell. So into the hypertonic, mainly what I want to say there, you are looking at the solvent. There more solvent is present outside and inside less solvent is there. Into hypotonic here, hypotonic is the solution which has lower osmotic concentration than the cell. Here water molecule is less as compared to the cell. Here inside water is more, like that way you define. See, there are two ways to see the things. Water is always a solvent. If I say, listen to me very carefully. Give me a second, guys. I'm so sorry. I have to cut the call and I'm putting my phone on silent. I'm so sorry. I did not take care. I'm just putting it on silent. Thrown it. Okay, so now you can just see uh, it in three ways. Uh, one, you can see it on the basis of solvent and then you can see it on the basis of solute. Like I was comparing it on the basis of solvent that H2 is having less solvent outside. I mean, H2 is a solvent itself, H2 is less. Means solute is more and inside solute is less. 
and here s2 is more or solute is less and inside solute is more you can take your one minute and think about it again see i am telling you two ways to learn the definition but you don't have to get confused you just remember it on one point water that in, you just learn the definition on the basis of water or solvent into hypertonic more solvent outside into hypertonic less solvent outside that's it rest you can just understand by yourself now things will become more clear to you here by you see a uh, basically guys here into the isotonic a solution that has the same solute concentration as another solution you can compare two solution or you can compare cell and solution i mean you just have to compare two thing so inside they have they have compared two solution or but in this they have given example of the cell so inside and outside so into the isotonic there is no net movement of the water molecule because it is moving on two ways in and out both is happening but it doesn't affect the concentration that's isotonic now into the hypertonic i told you externally water is water is more let's see a solution that has a higher solute concentration than another solution water particle will move out of the cell causing crenation crenation is another phenomenon i'll just explain you into the hypertonic solution here water is moving out yeah and here 40% solute concentration that's correct and into hypotonic here water moves inside is that clear because inside water the concentration is less and solute is more so what is moving and into hypertonic here water is moving outside because h2 externally is less and here h2 is more and outside solute is more did i tell you the same definition here into the hypertonic i told you h2 is more and here hypertonic they have told h2 give me give me a minute let me just confirm you here h2 is moving outside here into the animal cell in both cases into the hypertonic solution here uh, water h2o is comparatively less and solute is more inside h2 is more and that's why it is moving outside okay into the isotonic i don't have to tell uh, okay into the hypotonic solution here h2 is more and solute is less into the cell here uh, h2 is uh, less yeah because here h2 is more na that's what i told you so here solute is more h2 is less okay so one thing i have to tell you again i gave you definition here again i'll just mod would like to modify sorry for this uh, through the example actually things become back better so basically in the hypotonic solution i would like to come back here into the hypotonic solution you better see it on the definition of the solute sorry for this again so as here they have told let me just clarify here like suppose they have given example of hypotonic hypotonic is having less solute you just remember it better with the definition of solute less solute and more water so that's the reason that more water obviously water will move inside because outside water is more into the hypertonic here h2 is more uh, h2 is more inside and h2 is less outside solute is more outside h2 is less so obviously h2 will come outside from high to low now coming back here into the hypotonic here into the hypotonic cell will uh, water will move inside and he, into hypertonic water will move outside that way you remember that here h2 is moving outside because here h2 is less outside and here h2 is more outside clear hypotonic so now let me just tell you this कंफ्यूज होने की जरूरत नहीं है इट जस्ट दैट सिंपली आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू बट दैट्स वेरी इजी टू रिमेंबर नॉट एन इश्यू आई जस्ट टोल्ड टू डेफिनेशन दैट दैट्स अ रीजन एनीवेज देयर आर सर्टेन अदर थिंग्स यू नो एनीवेज लेट मी कम बैक हियर इनटू द हाइपोटोनिक सॉल्यूशन H2 इज मोर आउटसाइड एंड सॉल्यूट इज लेस यू आई रिपीट माय सेल्फ टू रिमेंबर द डेफिनेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सॉल्यूट ओनली सो व्हेन वाटर इज मोर आउटसाइड इट विल गो इनसाइड नाउ there are two things first case is the animal cell and the second case is the plant cell into the animal cell guys because the cell wall is not there only cell membrane is there and when water keeps on moving inside it is going to be lysed 
all water outside burst kind of thing and into the plant it remains turgid it remains very uh, rist prust type it remain very turgid as in you know very rigid type of because a lot of water is there but because of the cell wall this is protected into isotonic solution uh, in animal cell nothing happen but in plant cell cell become placid uh, actually if i define the placid placid means that when internal content is uh, no uh, is not having the turgor pressure turgor pressure is, means when a cell content is pushing the wall that middle cell content is there and it is pushing the wall that's placid I'm so sorry, guys. Let me just explain it. When a cell content is there, this is pushing the wall. That's turgor pressure. But flaccid means when a cell content is present in the center and it is having no power to push the wall. It is not pushing the wall. Is that clear? Now, guys, if you take a look here into the isotonic solution, this is like a normal cell. But here, into the plant cell, a cell has become flaccid. It means the central, all the material is present at the center, but is it is not able to push the wall because water is moving in and out, and that's the reason that all the material is just condensed at the center. But now, talking about the hypotonic solution here, into the hypotonic solution, water molecule is moving outside because H two O is present less. and solute is more outside and that's the reason so in case of animal cell it will become shriveled shrunken kind of and in plant cell that's plasmolyzed guys there are two things placid and plasmolyzed understand this in plant cell water is moving outside all the material inside will present at the center shrunken and has no pressure to push the wall and and has no turgor pressure turgor pressure means power to push the wall in flaccid and plasmolyzed in both cases cell have no capacity to push the wall but in flaccid material is present just like that in plasmolyzed material is shrunken also water is moving outside and that's the reason from everywhere inside the cytoplasm also water just moves outside i repeat myself in flaccid and plasmolyzed both have no capacity to push the wall but in plasmolyzed a cell material internally is shrunken as well and in hypotonic isotonic and hypertonic in all of the cases plant cell and animal cell behaves in different way remember this now forget the definition that i told you here just remember the definition that i told you here and here that you have to remember you have to remember it on the basis of water and solute in hypotonic solute is less outside in hypertonic solute is more outside that's it fair enough now let's move now guys the next thing acha i would like to add one more thing actually osmosis is further of na two types do i have a space here okay i'm going to cut all these things because so actually na osmosis here is of two type one is known as exosmosis and one is endosmosis what is wrong endosmosis this, uh, guys this digital pen is creating a problem i am writing it here again exosmosis and one is endosmosis exosmosis when cell is moving uh, the material is moving outside and endosmosis when material is moving inside you simply remember it on the basis of osmosis that into osmosis exosmosis molecules are moving outside and into endosmosis molecules are moving inside that's it now guys let's move forward i hope you're getting everything it's very easy just that now guys the next thing that we have to learn is about the cell wall one thing like suppose this is one plant cell then this is another plant cell both plant cell are externally having the cell wall the blue thing of the circle is actually the cell wall and cell membrane is present further inside so cell wall and cell wall they are attached and in between them a cementing material is present that cementing material is known as middle lamella middle lamella is a cementing material now talking about the cell wall it keeps the cell very hard very non living uh, thick and uh, because molecules and just uh, move really uh, throughout the cell wall and this is made up of cellulose now talking about the cellulose guys uh, actually in the plant cell this is made up of cellulose talking about bacteria talking about uh, uh, 
fungi they are made up of different things like talking about their chitin uh talking about the bacteria into the bacteria there is additional molecule present in the cell wall which is known as nag and nam remember this additional nag full form is n acetyl glucosamine this is a type of carbohydrate by the way you just have to remember the name nam is n acetyl muramic acid clear okay so now cell wall this is made up of uh, cell wall is non living thick and uh, freely permeable actually cell wall is made up of chitin and pectin in different stuff in cellulose uh, sorry in um, in fungi in bacteria in algae the cell wall is present now uh, this is a non living and this is present in eukaryotic plant cell and in prokaryotic cell also i have given you example bacteria your nag and nam is is that clear actually plant also have a little pectin i'm going to show you in the diagram it determines the shape and rigidity of the plant cell it protect the plasma membrane it prevent desiccation means dryness of the cell it help the transport of the various substances in and out of the cell now guys let's move forward if you take a look you don't have to be scared looking at this actually what they have shown is now like suppose this is a cell and this is another cell In the inside the plant cell, first of all, a cell membrane will be present. This is a cell membrane, and then a cell wall will be present. Cell wall, and then a cementing material is present, and then this is a cementing material. On the right side, they have shown that what things are present inside. So pectin is also present in the plant cell. I have uh, told you this uh, here into the cell wall. Cellulose is also present. That's it, and then they have shown the membrane. now they have given one one more actually primary cell wall and secondary cell wall that's not part of your syllabus but there's a phenomena which is maturation of the cell wall and here primary and secondary cell walls are found and then you need to remember you want to see you can just see that here cellulose is present and from the primary secondary cell wall originates that's it now guys today let me just take a look what we have learned and i think we have learned a lot so we have covered the structure of the cell basic structure cell membrane which is the phospholipid bilayer given by singer and nicolson fluid and mosaic property and then we have talked about the structure of fluid and mosaic model uh, how things were explained in this and then there's another picture i showed you video also and then i have explained you transport across the membrane which help uh, happen by active and passive transport and passive is further of two types diffusion and osmosis now after diffusion and osmosis i have explained you three type of solution isotonic hypotonic and hypotonic solution forget the definition here but remember the definition definition that i have told you here and here that you have to just see outside solute and water now moving further here you have to remember the cell wall which is made up of different things it's mainly made up of cellulose and pectin and in fungi chitin and in uh, algae pectin additionally that thing is also present and in bacteria there is nag and nam two things are present and these all names that i'm taking that you think are weird they are all carbohydrates actually i have told you function of the cell i have shown you diagram of the cell now the phenomena by which protoplast of a cell shrink from the cell is shrink 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 that's my lysis i should have given you example of being flaccid also now the barrier between the protoplasm and the outer membrane uh, environment in an animal cell it's an animal cell protoplasm and obviously plasma thank you actually guys before saying thank you i am thinking about to ask you one question mm, exosmosis and osmosis transport acting yeah one question they can ask in paper is the example of active transport so glucose and amino acid you can remember and uh, about osmosis they will simply ask the definition um now one more thing into the fluid mosaic model actually what they ask is the semi permeable membrane that's important question that why cell membrane is known as selectively permeable membrane that's it So I suppose everything is clear to you now. If you ha have any doubt, just put it on the forum. There's a discussion board on the left side in your student account. Just put your questions there. It's gonna be answered. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Have a nice day.